He's not teaching hate, he's teaching history. And since the American white man has used his control over the press and over the textbooks and over all forms of media uh, to make it appear that uh, uh, he has done us a favor by bringing us here and enslaving us, then the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has to rewrite history or retell history. And since the white man can't uh, dispute this truth, he tries to defend himself by saying that Mr. Muhammad is teaching hate. It's not hate to say that we were kidnapped and brought here, it's truth. It's not hate to say that we were Jim Crow, discriminated and segregated, it's truth. It's not hate to say that the Supreme Court, which is the highest court in this country, came up with a hypocritical uh, uh, de desegregation decision nine years ago, which they haven't enforced yet. That's not hate, that's truth. You're quoted as having said when an airliner crashed with a number of white people on board, that you were glad it happened. The white race in this country collectively are guilty of these crimes that our people are suffering from uh, collectively, and therefore they would su suffer some uh, collective disaster, collective grief, grief. And when that plane crashed in France with 130 white people on it, and we learned that 120 of them were from the state of Georgia, the state that my own grandfathers was a slave in, why, to me, it couldn't have been anything but an act of God, a blessing from God, and I frankly and sincerely pray for similar blessings from him to repeat themselves as often as he can spare them. But I take it then you support the, uh, the freedom-loving attempts of the uh, peaceful marchers in Alabama and these places. You don't get freedom peacefully. Freedom is never uh, safeguarded peacefully. Anyone who is depriving you of freedom isn't deserving of, an, of a peaceful approach uh, by the ones who are being deprived of their freedom. And when black people in this country uh, uh, come out from under the mental straitjacket that the Negro clergymen have placed them in and begin to see that the only way you can get freedom is to get it the same way the white man in this country got it from England, or uh, he says he got it from England. He was willing to pay the price for freedom. When, when you're willing to pay the price for freedom, then you'll get it. But the Negro in this country has never been willing to pay the price for his freedom. All of the price that we have been, that we have been paying in the past has been uh, freedom for the white man. We fought abroad so that the white man in America could be free today to sick police dogs on us, to beat our people in the heads with, with police clubs, and to turn water holes on, on little women and children and babies simply because they want to walk down the street like decent human beings. That's, now, the only way you can have peace is to eliminate those injustices, and the American white man is not going to eliminate them. He's going to talk that pretty talk, but he'll still continue to practice those inhuman deeds. You got the Honorable Elijah's message yourself behind prison walls. Uh, when I was a Christian, I committed many crimes, uh, and uh, those crimes led to my own imprisonment, and also led to my being very atheistic, agnostic first and then atheistic. And it was only after hearing the religious teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that I became religious and was able to reform myself and rehabilitate myself. But I learned that after trying to reform and rehabilitate myself that the American white man was more against me then than he was when I was a criminal, when I had criminal tendencies and was trying to carry out or practice his Christianity. Do you blame Christianity for your crimes? Christianity is one of the uh, real causes of most of the uh, condition that black people in this country uh, are confronted with. It's the religious concept that Christianity has given Negroes in this country that makes us almost incapable of solving our own problems. Uh, the black man in this country has a different religious concept when he's a Christian than the white man has. If you notice, the black man is the only one who will turn the other cheek uh, to his enemy or who will love his enemy or who will pray for those who despitefully use him just because he thinks that's what Jesus wants him to do. Now, the white man preaches the same thing, but he doesn't practice it. Now, this refusal to integrate, surely it must lead to demands for your own state in America. The black people in this country have been like a, a, a misfit wife uh, married to the white man here who hasn't treated us right. And today, since we have given up all hope of him ever changing, we want a divorce. We want a complete separation, but we want a property settlement. And we think that the white man, we, we, we think that the American government should give us a property settlement, which means part of this country, which they robbed from the Indians with our help, and which they have worked up to make the kind of land that it is today. Do you think this really practical? Don't you think that the future really lies with a peaceful transformation of the scene? If uh, the uh, American government, the Supreme Court, the President of the United States, the Congress and the Senate, and all these white liberals have said that they're for integration, and these Negroes haven't gotten any more integration than they have, why, well, that's more impractical than separation. 
practical. If they're practical, means that which you can practice. And if the Supreme Court and the Army and the Navy and the government and the President are supposed to be for integration and you still can't get it, why, good night. You can't get this impossible. But we can get separation overnight because we already have it. Mr. Malcolm, thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. I thank you for letting the people over in Europe know what the white man in this country is doing to black people and the hypocrisy he's practicing when he accuses them over there of not getting their house in order. Twenty million black people in this country have been just as thoroughly colonized by the American white man in a more shrewd, modern way than all of the colonized people in Angola, South Africa, or any other part of this world. But the white man over here hides his own dirt by constantly pointing toward Britain and France and Portugal and these other countries and accusing them of being colonial powers when he mastered colonialism before those countries ever knew what it was. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.